So Roblox's trails are an object that creates a trail effect between two attachments, and it's used to for example display a path of a moving object or a player's character. But as usual, leave a like as well to support the channel, also check out my Patreon page for exclusive content, and let's get into the video. So I'm going to be using my beam place for this, and if you are curious the link to it is going to be down in the description. And I also have ready textures in this place. But anyways, let's first discover how to make the trail in Roblox Studio. So similar to beams when they part, and this part needs to have two different attachments. So I'm going to duplicate this one, name this one one, and then this one is going to be zero. And now I'm going to make them visible and just move them a little bit away. Now, if I add a trail object, like I said in the intro, it's going to create it between these two attachments. So think of it as it basically making a line between these and then the trail coming out of this line. But let's actually just add the trail instance so we can see what I mean. Now down in the properties, under the data tab, we need to set the attachment 0 and the attachment 1 to create the trail. So attachment 0 is just going to be 0, and same for attachment 1. And now if I move this part, you can see that it's going to have the trail right here. So this is pretty simple. And now let's get to covering the properties of the trail instance, since like I said it's going to be very similar to the beams. So the face camera property is just going to make the beam basically just face the camera like this. Without this property, this is going to be a steel plane. Now the light emission, this means how much light the beam is basically just going to emit. You can see it being a little bit brighter here. And then the light influence is going to be how much the environment light is going to influence the trail. And if I lower it, you can see that we have a new brightness property. And now if I move this trail, you can see it being very bright. Then there is the texture which I'm going to leave for later. Under the data tab, there isn't really anything to cover, except these two attachments that I already did. But now there is a new emission tab, and this is exclusive to the trail instance, where we have the trail lifetime, the max length, the minimum length, and the width scale. So the lifetime is pretty self-explanatory too, since this just means how long the trail is going to last for. If I set it to 0.5 seconds, it's going to be this. But if I change it to, for example, 10, and then move this part, you can see that it's basically just going to stay. So let me set it to like 2. And now the max and minimum length, this is just going to set the threshold of the length of the trail, where the maximum length is of course going to determine the maximum length of the beam, meaning how long it can be, and zero is basically no limit. So if I change it to for example three, it's just going to be well going like this. And this is just kind of resembling a piece of paper. And now let me cover the color property and then move to the textures. So the color we can basically just set to whatever we want, we can for example just make it yellow, and if we wanted to, we can even change it to a gradient. And what's really cool about this gradient is that the color of the trail is going to change depending on its current lifespan. So it's pretty neat. And now for the texture. So I'm just going to use one of the textures that I've used for the beams and just show you how it looks like. So this is going to be the default one with the texture mode set to stretch. So if I move this part, you can see that it's going to basically just stretch the texture out depending on the length of the beam. Now the static is going to make it so it's going to be a static image. And the wrap is going to have this really cool effect where the texture is going to move alongside with the beam. And now the texture length is of course going to be the length of the texture on its created planes. So if I make it really short, it's basically just going to make this well blurry image because if I zoom it in, you can see that, well, the texture is basically really flatted out. And if I make it really long, it's basically just going to be the reverse. And now there is also the transparency property that again can be a number sequence. And for example, I can make it where the beam is going to be transparent towards the end. So it's just going to go like this. And now there is one more property that I need to cover and it's the width scale where again it can be changed to a number sequence, but what this property does, it basically just determines the width of the beam. And so if I change it to 0.1 for example, you can see that the beam is going to be really thin, and its value goes from 0 to 1, as shown on this number sequence. So if I wanted to, I could for example make this beam decrease in size. So now it's going to be presented like this. And I can also present this on a trail without the texture where it's going to have a really cool effect. And I can also make it a little bit better by decreasing the lifetime, where it's going to be flashing like this. And there is a lot of different stuff that you can do with, for example, the width scale, where you could just mess around with these sliders. 
And now if I were to move this beam, you can see that it's going to have a really neat effect and it's something that you don't really need a texture for. And I can even rotate this part around and just move it like this. So that's the basics of the trail instance. And now let me cover different stuff on, for example, how to add a trail to the player or to, for example, a weapon. And I'm going to use this part that I just made, where I'm also going to need to make these attachments not visible and also just move them into the part. So let's switch to just add this beam into the player by adding a script into the server script service. And I'm just going to move it right here. And since we already have this part made, it's going to be really easy to basically just make a reference to it and then just store it inside of the player's character instead of having to script the whole instance attachments and the properties. So I'm just going to do local part is equal to the workspace that and I'm just going to change the name to a trail part. So it's going to be workspace that trail part. Then I'm going to need the player service and then just make a local function called on player added, which is not going to return anything. And then another function which is going to be called on character loaded, which again is not going to return anything. So this on player added function is going to get the player, that's the player type, and this is going to get the character, which is a model. And this is not really necessary same as this, because I'm just doing something called type checking. But anyway, so let's just connect the on player added function to the player service that player added event, and just to connect on player added. And here we need to do player that character appearance loaded, connect on character loaded. And here we are going to just clone the part by doing part then the clone method, set the clones parent to the given character, and then create a weld by doing instance that new then weld constraint. And for this weld we are going to need some kind of an instance that we can connect our part to. So let's just make a reference to the humanoid root part, which is going to be character, then find fish child, and humanoid root part and just do if not humanoid root part, then I just want to return an end. So weld part 0 is going to be the humanoid root part, then the weld part 1 is just going to be the cloned part. And now I'm also going to make this part not cast the shadow, as well as make it transparent, and also not collidable. So I don't have to change these properties through code. And since we have the humanoid root part now, we also need to set the clone.c frame to be the humanoid root part C frame as well. And now we just set the weld.parent to be the clone for example. And now I can simply just do a playtest. Where if I go to the workspace then my character, I'm just going to have the trail part right here. And the orientation isn't really right, because now these attachments are going to be horizontal instead of vertical. But basically if I walk I'm going to have the trail behind me right here. But let me just fix this thing now really quickly. And it's just going to be as simple as rotating this part. Then just scaling down and rotating these two attachments. Then I'm just going to move this one a little bit lower and this one a little bit higher. So with this part being here, I can again just do a playtest. And now my character is going to have this trail. So yeah, that's one of the things covered. And like I said, it's going to be way easier to have a part that you can simply just clone that already has the beam with all of the settings instead of just coding everything through the instance new, then changing the position, then changing the properties. But yeah, and you can see that there isn't really a lot of scripting to it. And now I am in one of my places from the Raycast hitbox tutorial, but I'm actually just going to cover the same thing on how to add a tray to the weapon. And it's just going to be as simple as getting the battle axe, as well as the trail part, and just positioning it in the same place as for example the edge of the blade. So I'm just going to have it here, move it into the battle axe, and then just create a weld constraint. Set the part 0 to be the trail, and part one to be anything like the maybe for example blade. And now it's going to have this connection. So if I move the axe around it's just going to have the trail right here. And if I put it back into the starter pack and again do a playtest, the battle axe is just going to have this trail, but it would be nice to only have it enabled only when we are attacking. But you can see that it looks pretty sick. So I'm just going to go into the tool script from the battle axe and just go to the on active function. You don't really have to worry about the code since we are only going to get a reference to the trail part and just enable and disable the trail. So local trail part it is going to be the tool and find fish child then the trail part. And then we are going to need the trail instance itself so we can do local trail instance and just leave it as nil. And we can just do a quick simple check by doing it trail part then trail instance is going to be the trail part find fish child and this one is going to be of class trail and we can just for example enable it by doing the trail instance that enabled and just setting it to true 
at the same time after the hitbox basically just stops, which means after waiting this cooldown. And this trade also needs to be disabled by default. So if I do a playtest now, the trail is not going to be enabled, but once I swing, it basically just is. It's just going to work like this. And there is basically a lot of customization that you can do with the trail instances. And the trails are actually really powerful. And just to show it a little bit more, I basically just change the texture again. And I can also just change the color sequence. For example, just something like this. And now if I were to swing the axe, you can see that it has a pretty neat laser effect. And this is how it's going to look without the texture. And again, really quickly, I'm just going to show the same way as I did in my beans video on how to get the trade textures. So again, you can just go to the toolbox and again, search for something like a beam texture. And once I insert one of these models, there is going to be a lot of textures right here. And these beam textures are also going to work on the trails, but I basically just went into detail on this more in my previous video. So I recommend that you check it out. But yeah, that's basically going to be everything for today. So again, go check out my Patreon page and leave a like and subscribe to support your channel. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hope everyone has a nice day and see you guys.